this is saying is that goodness cannot flourish if followers do not willingly subject themselves to authority. Specifically, it's talking about state authority in this instance. And this means we must dispel the myth that everything rises and falls on leadership. Right, that's a common mantra that has been repeated over and over in certain Christian circles that everything rises and falls on leadership. And it's almost right, but not quite. Yes, of course, leadership matters and it matters greatly. But God's house requires many supporting pillars in order to stand strong. For example, Moses uh, heroically led the Hebrews out of Egypt. Yet that generation died in the wilderness because of their stubbornness. The followers failed. Even later on, when they had finally, uh, when they finally did inhabit the land, we're told of King Uzziah in Second Chronicles. Scripture says this: He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but the people still followed corrupt practices. If we don't learn to follow well, we undermine the divine purpose of leadership. Dysfunctional followers can, just like dysfunctional leaders, but dysfunctional followers can also spread disunity and division and confusion and even immorality like that example. Without the cooperation and humility of the people laying down individual agendas, then the collective group cannot effectively strive towards significant goals. The challenge of leadership is to help people see this. And as God's family, we've been given the greatest mission of all, to shine the gospel of grace to all people. So let us not be those who inhibit that mission through our own pride or our own disloyalty or our own disruption or disruptiveness. Just as leaders need to be held accountable and earn trust, very important, so too with followers. It might be hard to imagine, but there are some battles where just one soldier's independence and lack of followership can lead to the catastrophic defeat of everyone. And that reality is possible in ministry. Now, God in his wisdom does not expect us to blindly follow any leader. There are safeguards to this. So in Acts chapter 5 verse 29, The Apostle Peter says, we must obey God rather than men. And when leaders depart from God's moral standards, we must depart from those leaders. Our highest allegiance, of course, is to Jesus. Jesus is the good and great shepherd. We, as uh, God's people, as the community of God, we all bear responsibility not to subject ourselves to false leaders. It's not uncommon for some people in ministry at any level or in any position to draw followers to themselves in an act of rebellion against those whom God has established. When you like and subscribe, this video reaches more people.